Hello, good afternoon. Here is to all the brave ones who are here. Um, so today I'm here to share with you uh, my journey and really about storytelling. And I really want to introduce a new concept I've been thinking about, which I call the economy of experiences. And uh, let me tell a little bit about that. You know, for all of us, um, storytelling starts when we are children. You know, my grandmother used to tell stories to me, especially of mythology. You know, in Indian mythology, we have Ramayana, Mahabharata. We used to tell all these stories. And you listen to them, and they're just stories. But as you grow older, you realize that every story has something to teach you. And the experience of listening to a story is very, very powerful. I don't remember really what toys I had or what my dad bought me or anything, but I remember how the stories made me feel, the stories my grandma told me, my dad told me. So I think we are moving into a world where experiences are more valuable than products. You know, we came through an industrial the revolution where it started with the making of the cars and engines and all these things. And it was about how many homes we have, how many clothes we have, how much jewelry we have, how much products we have. And especially the pandemic has taught us that products don't matter. And I think what we seek now is experiences. So I want to submit to you that we are moving into a world for the next 200 years where it is the economy of experiences. And let me share with you a few experiences. You know, I told you mythology. My grandmother used to tell all these stories. And one of the things in mythologies is the kings do this big ceremony where they, where they pray to the fire. This is called Ashwamedha Yoga. Ashwamedha means it's a horse. And what they do, the king does, is he lets his horse go as long as the ceremony is going on. And wherever the horse goes, which is followed by all his army, belongs to the king. You know, so as long as he's doing these prayers, wherever the horse goes, that belongs to him. And if there is some opposition from the other person, the army moves in and takes over that place. So it's a, while it's an event, it was very clearly about the king establishing his rule. So this is all about how each event is not just the event. It has a larger purpose. It has a larger impact. It's a point it's trying to make. So while this was about the king showing his power, think about something like Woodstock. You know, this was a big music festival that happened in America in the 60s, which was at the epitome of the hippie revolution, etc. This was not just a music concert. It was a statement to the rest of the world that there's an alternative way of being expressed through music. So while it was just an event, but even to this day, it's talked about because it made a cultural statement. Similarly, if you look at Sundance Film Festival, there was always Cannes Film Festival, which is big films, etc. But Sundance Film Festival in America started to support the independent cinema. So it was by Robert Redford, and it was a very clear vision of supporting the small filmmaker. And it's a huge institution today. Or in Europe, if you look at the World Economic Forum, it was started because Europe as a uh, continent was worried about you know, North America and Asia, all of them being just big in size, taking over stuff, and they wanted to matter in this world. So they said, we are going to do this thing called, it was initially, I think, called World European Forum, and we'll bring the rest of the world into Europe to let them see what Europe has to offer to the rest of the world. And today, it's one of the most powerful gatherings where people from all over the world come. But it was started to make a point about Europe, about Europe being important in this world. Uh, similarly, a lot of you know about TED conferences that happen in Vancouver. And it started with 
technology, entertainment, design. You know, all the technologists live in one part of the world, all the entertainers were in LA, all the designers were in New York. So someone, Richard Saul Warman, said that we need to get all these people together for the future of the internet. I mean, think about it. He said this in the 1980s. And today, it's one of the most powerful gatherings of ideas. So, or you take Singularity University in, um, I'm sorry, I'm giving a lot of American examples because that's where I live. I don't want to culturally inappropriate by giving examples from Europe, but you can give the examples. Uh, you can see it in your own uh, area. Now, there is, uh, you know, academ academia has been, you come and do two-year degree, three-year degree, five-year degree, etc. And Singularity University came in 2008, 2009, nine frame and said, we time frame, and then they said, we really need to think of education very differently, especially executive education very differently. We need to let people know what's happening to the future of technology, etc. And they set up a university that's very different than any other university. And um, so the point I want to make in all these is that while these are just events, they mean something larger. So from that context, think of just this gathering. It's a festival of, it's about not just uh, uh, anything but a consciousness. Consciousness is a very generic term, right? It's much larger than any one subject. The purpose of it is, yes, in this event we have 100 people, 300 people, 5,000 people or whatever, but the point is, how can we make a larger noise, larger consciousness about consciousness? So when you have all these people who gather and all these connections that are forming, which will continue outside of this, that's when an idea becomes big, is not by keeping it, but by letting it go. So I just want to say that events are really, really powerful in this world because they stand for a thought process, for an idea. And that experience, nobody will forget. And I'm sure when you're all here, when you leave here after three days, there'll be something you saw here that you'll remember for the rest of your lives. Something someone said, maybe the dance that you did or the yoga that you did or some line somebody said or a friendship you made here. So this event will impact your life outside of this event beyond just these few days. So events are extremely important in creating a whole new economy, whole new thought process, whole new collaborations that will come out of it. So the connections that are born out of these events are the experiences that will turn into future of economy. I mean, two people who meet here may start a company. You know, somebody who already has a company may find an employee here, or three people will come together and say, let's start this. Or I, like, for example, for us, we already have a conference in India, and we are collaborating with Festival of Consciousness, so we can have people from there to come here, people from here to come there. We don't need to do everything ourselves. We can collaborate with each other. That's how the economy expands. And so I just want us to understand, you know, this is just an example of, we started with, uh, it, this is just an example I want to give is, we used to buy all the ingredients for a cake, and then we used to make it at home, from scratch, that's how we started. And then pre-mixes started coming, you know, so we said, okay, I'll buy a cake mix, and I'll make cake at home. And then now it's like, I'll just go to a bakery, and I'll buy a cake, and I'll take it home. It's all ready-made done. And then I say, you know, it, I used to plan the party myself. Now I say, I'll get an event planner, somebody will pa, you know, plan everything, I'll just show up there and have a good time. And interestingly, where we are going back to now is that in, for example, in cuisine, one of the most popular things is deconstruction of things, deconstruction of a cake, etc. What is the thing that most of the people are doing today when you say farm to table and all these things? We are going back to buying ingredients for the cake. We are going back to a time where we are seeking to come together and cook together, to come together and hang out together. It's not okay if somebody else does everything and we show up. We want to experience doing something together. So that's, it's a full circle. We have come back to that. And now, when we say sustainability, when we say green and all that stuff, it's about having that experience together. No matter how much money you have, 
you want to be with people you care about and do things together with them. So what makes a great experience and how can you turn it into a financially successful economy? Anything you do has to evoke wonder. It has to fuel the imagination. It has to enable growth and it has to create impact. If I felt by coming here, I have been able to take something out of it that has made whatever I do better. I've been able to meet better partners. I've been able to meet better people, etc. That's creating an impact for me. And guess what? I'll come back here next year. I already have decided I'm coming back here next year, this time with 50 or 100 people, not just with five people. You know, so if we can create that wonder, I've had a wonderful experience and it had a positive impact on what I do in my business that I have so many people I met here, I've invited them to India, etc. So I think the fact that it evoked wonder, give me a great experience and create an impact, I'm taking it back. And that is what creates a loyalty. Now I have a loyalty toward this brand and I want to keep coming back. And that's what we want as companies, et cetera, is how do you create a great experience for someone that they want to come back to you again and again? It's not just by giving discounts or whatever. In fact, people are willing to pay a premium if you give them a great experience. So I want to share with you a little bit about Inc. You know, we have been uh, running Inc. conference in India for the last uh, 12 years. And we are now excited about, you know, after being at this for 12 years, we had over 500 talks, and there's five films that came out of the talks that we made. Many people won national honors and everything. Because what we do is find people whose stories are unheard of and put them on a stage and make them famous. So suddenly people feel, wow, I want to go to this place because I find things I can't find anywhere else. Great things that are happening here, great insights, something that makes me think differently. So we spend a lot of time on creating a great experience for the audience. And our audience are people who are CEOs and CXOs and people who are doing huge things. And we are telling them, you know what, at the end of the day in your company, unless your employees experience you, that you care about them, you can't build loyalty. So things like compassion and empathy and storytelling, these are not just words. These really matter. What is the story you're telling of your company? What is the story you're telling to your employees? What is the level of loyalty you're building? And especially in today's world where we are all working remotely, when people go from one job to the other, it's just you return one laptop and you get another laptop. There is no connection to the company. How do you make sure there is a connection to the people that they feel loyal to you? That's the journey we are on. And, you know, there's some great course. There's something that says that I may not know, uh, you know, when you give a product to somebody or not, I may not remember anything, but I always remember what you made me feel. You know, what I feel in your presence, I will never forget. So I think as businesses, as leaders, as people, we need to understand that the era of the product economy is over because when we didn't have anything, when we didn't have the food and shelter and clothing, when we needed that car, when we needed that house, that was important. But now that the basics are taken care of, and when we realize, you know, once you have one car, and one home, you don't need 10 cars and 20 homes and 30 yachts. So now you seek experiences. So it's sort of, there is Maslow's theory of hierarchy. There is wants, there's needs, wants, and then self-actualization. And I believe that everybody needs everything at the same time. We have our wants, needs, and self-actualization all at the same time. So I want to leave you with a quote uh, that guides us uh, at Inc. And one of the things we are doing at Inc. now is that we have done a conference like this. People come from all over the world, etc. Now we feel we want to have a space where people can come together all the time. So we have partnered with one of our Inc. fellows, Amanvendra, he's here. 
he's creating a 500-acre city outside Jaipur called Dhun, where we are setting up an ink imagination center. So there is a space for people to come and stay and collaborate throughout the year. Imagine if we can meet people like this all the time, if you can live with people who think alike, etc. So can we create a positive, intentional community? And there is a name we give this uh, community or the members of this community is. There's a quote that guides us, I think. It says that life ought not to be measured by the number of breaths we take, but by the number of moments that take our breath away. If that is true, we should all be greedy about the number of magical moments we can create for others. And that's who we call billionaires of moments. And we want to live with them, learn from them, be with them. And that's the community we want to create. So welcome to the new experience economy. And may we all be billionaires of moments. Thank you. <laughs>